Hi, today we are going to learn about polynomials. An algebraic expression of this form is called a polynomial, where n is a whole number. Now there are some notations attached with a polynomial, which I'll introduce right now. First of all, this unit, that is any of these, of the form a m x to the power m, is called a term. Also, if your polynomial contains only one term, then the polynomial is called a monomial. That is, and examples of that are 3x, 3x square, minus 10x to the power 5, 3, etc. If the polynomial contains two terms, then it is called a binomial. And binomials are, the examples of binomials are 3x square plus 2, 10z square plus 3z, say 7, x square plus 15 x to the power 5 etc. And if the polynomial contains three terms then it's called a trinomial. And examples include x to the power 5 plus 2x square plus 1 or x cube plus x square plus 10 etc. Now, another thing, uh, another notation attached with polynomials is the degree of the polynomial. Now, the degree of the polynomial is given by the power of the highest, the, the highest power of any term present in the polynomial. That is, uh, it will be more clear with an example. So, therefore, consider the polynomial x square plus 10 x to the power 5 plus 3 x square. Make that x cube. Right? So, in this polynomial, the term with the highest power of x is this one. And the power in question is 5. And so, therefore, the degree of this polynomial will be 5. For example, let, let's take another example of x cube plus 2 x. In this, the highest power associated with any of the terms is 3. And so, therefore, the degree of this polynomial as a whole is 3. If the degree of a polynomial is 1, then it is called a linear polynomial. If the degree is 2, then it is called a quadratic polynomial. And if the degree is 3, then it's called a cubic polynomial. Some other things that need to be kept in mind or other notations that need to be kept in mind is that of a zero polynomial and a constant polynomial. A, a whole number itself can be called a polynomial. That is, 3 is also a polynomial or say, minus 5 in itself, minus 5 is a polynomial in itself, uh, which can be thought of as a naught x to the power 0, where a naught is equal to 3 and minus 5 respectively. Now, these polynomials are called constant polynomials. And a special case of a constant polynomial is a zero polynomial, that is, the whole number 0 itself, wherein a n, a n minus 1, a n minus 2, or up until a naught are all equal and are equal to 0. And the 0 whole number itself can also be called a 0 polynomial. Now we'll move on to what we mean by the zeros of a polynomial. The zeros of a polynomial are very important for the analysis of polynomials and their further use. 
So we define the zero of a polynomial as a real number a. That is, if a real number a real number a is called zero of p a if p a is equal to zero. I repeat, a real number a is called a zero of of this should be p x. If p a is equal to zero, also a is called the root of the equation p x is equal to zero. You see how a polynomial can be converted to an equation by putting equal to zero. So a is called the root of the equation p x is equal to zero if a is the zero of p x. Now every linear polynomial has a unique zero. A non-zero constant polynomial has no zeros, which can be easily seen. The polynomial, say p x is equal to five, is equal to zero for no values of no values of x, because five cannot can never be equal to zero. Okay, so. A non-zero constant polynomial has no zeros. Also, every real number is a zero of the zero polynomial. The zero polynomial is given by this: p x is equal to zero. And when you talk about p x is equal to zero being equal to zero, this is an identity, and so therefore it is true for every real number. And hence the property: every real number is a zero of the zero polynomial. Now we will look at how to divide a polynomial of higher order by a polynomial of a lower order. This is the 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 way to do it is very similar to that of normal long form arithmetic division, and we will look at it through an example. Say we want to divide five x cube minus two x square plus 3x minus 2 by x minus 1. Now, the setup itself is very similar to normal arithmetic long long form division, and we'll proceed in a similar very uh, in a fashion that is very similar to it. So we'll start off by multiplying. We'll start off by uh, dividing 5x cube by x. So we get 5x square. So we add 5x square here, and we write down 5x square into x minus 1 here. That is 5x cube minus 1. Sorry, minus 1. Sorry, minus 5x square. Sorry, and uh, this will be minus. This will be plus. And we get 3x square. Plus 3x. Now we write plus 3x. We multiply this by x minus 1. We get 3x squared minus 3x. And this will be minus. This will be plus. We get 6x minus 2. So this is plus 6, and this is 6x. Minus six. So this will be minus and this will be plus, and we get four. And this is where it stops. We have hit a constant, and uh, we can't really multiply it by another uh, term, so that uh, we get four here. And so therefore, this is where we stop. So uh, this is the. Uh, This is a polynomial we went on to divide. This is the divisor. This is the quotient, and this is the remainder. And this is long form division. Note that uh, we are dividing a third order polynomial, that is a cubic polynomial, by a linear polynomial because the power here is one. And notice how we get a uh, a quotient of order two, that is two plus one is equal to three. And uh, also note that the uh, remainder is of 
an order one less than the order of the divisor. Now we want to look at an easy way to divide a linear polynomial divide a polynomial by a linear polynomial. Turns out we can actually construct a theorem for it, which is the called the remainder theorem. This theorem is used to find out the remainder that we will get on dividing a polynomial by a linear polynomial. It is stated as such. If a linear, if a polynomial of, if Px is any polynomial of degree greater than or equal to 1 and Px is divided by a linear polynomial x minus a, the remainder is Pa. Now this can be seen uh, if we just write down how division is, uh, is represented. So we have Px is equal to x minus a into let's call this qa for for the uh, sorry qx for the quotient and the remainder a naught now uh, keep in mind that i am writing the remainder as a naught and not as rx or uh, you know dependent on x because the divisor is of the order 1 and so therefore the remainder is going to be a constant and here you see uh, now we can put x equal to 1 and see what happens so we have pa is equal to a minus a into q of a q of a plus a naught which is the remainder and you have pa is equal to a naught. Hence we have proved that the remainder is equal to pa. Now uh, let's apply this theorem to the question that we did last that is dividing this polynomial by x minus a sorry x minus 1 and see if this holds. So we had px is equal to 5 x cube minus 2x square plus 3x minus 2 and it was divided by say dx is equal to x minus 1 now x minus 1 is of the form that x minus 1 is the linear polynomial uh, with which we are dividing px so we need to put so we need to find out p1 to get the remainder so therefore p1 is equal to 5 into 1 cube minus 2 into 1 square plus 3 into 1 minus 2 that is 5 minus 2 plus 3 minus 2 that is equal to 4 which is the answer that we got through long form division also so remainder theorem can be very useful to find out the remainder that we would get on dividing a polynomial by a linear polynomial. Now there is another important theorem attached to uh, the study of polynomials which is called the factor theorem and we will cover that in the next lecture. For now this is all. Thank you.